I'm cooking dinner with you tonight and it is a sheet pan herb crusted halibut and asparagus and potatoes. It is a delicious meal because guess what? It can be made so quickly. I'm gonna say 45 minutes for about anyone. And you're gonna see how this whole meal, colorful, beautiful, delicious, healthy, is gonna be on your plate really soon. Let's make it. While the star may be the fish, we're actually gonna start with the potato. So I'm using small potatoes. Now you can use any potato and just cut it to the same size. A Russet potato, a Yukon potato, whatever. I have these small new potatoes and I like to get them multicolored. One, did you know that when there's different colors in vegetables, different pigments, that's actually different nutrition that our bodies need. So I'm cutting some of them just down into more bite-sized pieces. I love, look at that, yep beautiful purple color. I almost said yellow, it's not yellow, but there are some creamy yellow potatoes in there too. So what we're working with is kind of the idea that potatoes are dense, they take longer to bake, right? So we have to get them started, give them a little bit of a par bake before we fully bake them. So I have the potatoes right in here and we're gonna just douse them in some olive oil because that's gonna help flavor them. It's gonna give them good roasting. So when that's in there, I like to just, just toss them and you can just do it like this. like. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to use your hands right away. Just toss them so they get really well coated. We're gonna do a little bit of seasoning, but we're keeping it light because our fish is really where the flavor is gonna come from with that beautiful crust that is going on top. So in here, I'm gonna put some garlic powder. I had to smell it. This is where I think garlic powder and onion powder are pantry staples that we really kind of stopped using for a while, but Bring them back. They have a sweet, beautiful aroma. They don't burn. We're gonna put some kosher salt. We need a good amount of it, you know why? Potatoes need salt. And if you're cooking at home, you're always using less salt than if you eat out, always. And then some black pepper, and I freshly cracked it, just so it had all the flavor. So I'm just mixing that together really quickly. What I'm gonna do is use most of it, leaving a little bit in the bowl, on these potatoes, because I want the asparagus to have a little bit of this flavor too. But you can see what I'm doing is just really coating them. And I'm leaving a little bit, see, just a little bit in here. And then we're just gonna, again, toss them. Look how beautiful that is. And it doesn't take any time to coat them all. So we're gonna just grab our sheet pan, parchment lined, easier cleanup, no sticking. And we're gonna just pour them onto the sheet pan. Now this sheet pan is gonna act as the whole meal, but we're gonna start with, and notice by the way, I know, but notice there is some residual oils in here. Keep that in there, we're gonna use that in a minute. But just spread these out into an even layer. And if you want, you can pop them right side. No, that one, I missed one. I think that one needs to be cut in half yet. I know, just you know what? This is how cooking is. You go kind of by the sight of your, just how it works sometimes. You just fly with it. I am separating, because I'm a visual person, the um, colors to be a little bit more even. So we're gonna pop this in for 15 minutes. During those minutes, we are gonna be making the fish. We're gonna be getting the asparagus ready. It's gonna be a meal. With the potatoes going, we have a little bit of residual oil. We're gonna utilize that. We're gonna take our asparagus. I am still pulling so much of this in from the garden, which is what I love. That means I'm eating it almost every day. <laughs> That's how it works when you have a garden. You eat what's in season. And I'm just gonna make it into bite-sized pieces. Now, if you're using store-bought asparagus, always check if it's dry at the bottom and snap off any dry bits. But what I'm gonna do is just throw this all right into the residual oil. So I'm just tossing in any of that residual oil, which there's always residual oil, you can see the asparagus in it, and then putting the little bit of seasoning we've left on it. And you can use a spatula too to make sure you can scrape that away, but this can now just sit for a few minutes here as we're waiting, and we're gonna make our crust. So the crust to me is really simple, and what it is is flavor, texture, but it also really insulates the fish. So white fish, I'm using halibut, it can really become dried out. It can overcook very quickly. So this actually helps insulate it. So it cooks just perfectly in the time we're gonna need it here. So what I'm gonna do is start with, I think any fish needs some fresh herbs. So I'm gonna do a conglomeration of two, some dill and a good amount of parsley, which I'm just kind of, you see what I'm doing there? I'm just making it in smaller bits so it can go right in. Now, if you get some of the stems, that's not a bad thing. They're gonna chop up, that's just fine. Don't worry about that. So we're gonna put that right in there. And then we're gonna talk about garlic. So I want garlic and I want it to have a lot of good flavor. So I'm gonna take my cloves, I'm just gonna smash them with the back of a knife because I wanna get that husk off. But I don't need to really chop them down further than that because we're using a food processor. So you could obviously, you know, there was a time when we did not have food processors. You could obviously do this all by hand if you wanted to. I let the food processor really do all the work because if we're gonna have these machines, we may as well use them. So I'm putting that right there, and then we have some cheese. Now I'm taking fresh Parmesan cheese, and I am grating it. You can see 
It doesn't really matter. I'm not doing big chunks of it because it doesn't always break down the quickest. So I like to make sure I grate it and I'm using a little bit bigger grate than I would if I was doing like a fine microplane. And so what I'm gonna do is grab all this Parmesan. So think of this as a salty seasoning really to this crust, which I like. We're gonna put it right in there. To this, we're gonna add some almonds. Look how beautiful those are going in. And so think of the texture they're gonna give. Some panko breadcrumbs. Again, texture upon texture upon texture. I'm gonna put in olive oil, super important. So what the olive oil does is help bind it, which is what you really want. It adds a richness, which is really important. Then a little bit of lemon juice, which you know, again, fish, lemon juice, dill, all this is just making sense together. And what it does is really brightens it and helps bind it. And now you just wanna pulse it. And the reason I'm pulsing it, it helps it evenly break up. And it can take a few different times depending on your machine. I'm gonna probably say around six to eight couple second pulses. So after a few pulses, it's really like a rough pesto, but it has those breadcrumbs in it. Look how beautiful that is. So you can tell it's gonna be fresh and colorful and really give a lot of flavor. And that to me, that's the whole point. So what we have now are our fish. So let's talk about this. I live in Iowa. We don't have fresh fish. And if we do, it's usually been frozen and thawed. No, just saying it's fresh. So I buy frozen fish. I buy the fillets that come in packages. You can buy good quality fillets like that. But notice sometimes they can vary. So I wanted you to see, you can sometimes buy a fillet like this. Both of these are the same ounce, but they look very different. So if only you can find flat ones, the, here, the point is to have even cooking. So all these you can tell about the same thickness. They're gonna cook evenly. This one is not. So what I would do in this case, if we had to use one of these and a few of the others, is fold this in half and then make the same thickness out of it. So you just have to kind of check what you can find, what's available to you and what's gonna work. So what I wanna do is start by putting the fish, just so it's easier for me to work with, onto the small baking sheet. And it's thawed. I let it thaw in the fridge overnight. And then what I'm doing is gonna pat it dry because you want what we're doing here to adhere to it. So I'm just, frozen fish especially, has a lot of moisture obviously in it. So when you sit here and pat it dry, you're getting a lot of that water out of it and see how it just soaks into that towel. I really wanna get that out of there so we can actually now put on top a couple things. So my hands are dirty, but I'm using everything we're gonna be doing. But I do wanna clean them first because I need to salt and pepper this and I don't wanna stick my hands from this into my salt. So I'm gonna wash them and we'll salt and pepper them. With everything dried off, I wanna make sure I salt them well. So this is your chance to really season what we're doing and we want it as close to the meat as we can. So we're putting it right down on the fish, that amount of salt. Now remember, we didn't put salt in the topping that crust, but we are putting it right on top and it's kosher salt. And then we're going to pepper it. So this is again, that first layer of seasoning. And now, so we kind of need a glue, I like to think, and also just like a nice layer of rich flavor. A Little bit of Dijon with a little bit of mayonnaise. I happen to have aioli, so we're using aioli. But I'm just gonna mix that together. And what we're doing is creating a glue for that crust to adhere, but also add this whole other possibility for flavor, and that to me is a wonderful thing. So I'm gonna start by just putting a little bit on them, and then I'll go, and I will just be brushing it on. But we just wanna evenly distribute it. So I'm just making sure to use it all up. You can see what I'm doing here. And remember, fish is very lean in this case, white fish, this halibut. So this little bit of glue is also gonna add a nice richness. I finished brushing them, I pulled the potatoes out of the oven, and I'm just now putting the crust on. So it's a crust, it's that panko breadcrumb, it really starts holding together pretty well. And you can see you're able to lift it and then just start patting it on. And this is kind of a, we're using this baking sheet to catch our mess before we put it onto our final one, which also works really nice. But this is where, if you wanted to, you could have these you know, ready to go a little bit ahead of time to bake later. You could even put them in the fridge if you wanted to. And then, we can now just put it all together. So see how beautiful, this just really simply creates a really quick, elegant meal, but look at it in no time. So I'm gonna wash my hands so I can grab those potatoes. They were just par-baked, remember. So they're getting a little bit of beautiful color, but they're not fully cooked yet. So we wanna finish their baking in the time that we're going to be taking them with the asparagus now and the fish, everything together. So what I'm gonna do is put them here. Remember it's hot, hot pan, don't forget that. So. Some chefs like to keep something on it or you know, a little towel there, just so you know. What I'm gonna start with is the asparagus, and I want to just evenly, as much as I can, 
just start putting it around and then we can place it as needed. What we're doing is just filling in any of those cracks and you can just set it around. And then what we're gonna do is make little spots. So we're gonna make little spots where we can put pieces of fish. And we'll start by taking some of the fish and we'll put it down and we'll make another spot. But see what we're doing? We're just spreading things around so we can really easily and beautifully place it. What I always hope I can do, and I think what my dream is, is that food seems accessible. It seems doable because the thing is we go out to eat for crusted fish, right? But look how easy it is. You can do this at home. It's a healthy, delicious, full meal for your family. And I get it. Kids aren't always gonna like fish. I happen to be one of those kids that did like fish. But it starts getting them used to things like this and it starts getting you used to making it. And that to me is the exciting part. So I'm gonna pop this back in the oven. We're gonna let it roast a little bit longer and then we are gonna eat a beautiful full meal and look at all that color on it. So you can see when it comes out of the oven, it gets the nice kind of brown top. That's those raw almonds started toasting. And you can see these potatoes. I wanna show you how beautiful. I mean, look at that browning that's happening on them. They get almost a crust on top. They're delicious, they're creamy. Let's just start by trying a potato. I mean, mm, that's so good. So if you're gonna serve this to Mona Elevate it and you're gonna maybe either plate it for people or put it on a platter, I would put some fresh parm on top. You could do some fresh dill. You could do a squeeze of lemon. Sometimes when you're just hungry, you're just gonna go in and eat. So I'm gonna take some of this white fish right here. I'm gonna steal it off this corner. And what I love about white fish is how simple it is, but it can take up so many flavors. That's so good. The key in it is that mayonnaise in Dijon, it brings out the flavor of that crust we put on top so much. And then when you add in the asparagus, which is that crisp tender, this is why I love to roast it. And just for enough time, mm, tender but not mushy. I hate mushy. This is a great meal. It is, when you think about it, it is a great filling meal. You're getting some health benefits with all the different components and you're getting flavor with each one too, which is what's important because when you're gonna eat food, not only do you eat with your eyes first, but then you wanna eat it, you wanna enjoy it and you wanna feel satisfied. That's exactly what this does. As always, check your fish. If you think it's gonna have a long time left to cook, the minutes go very quick. One to two minutes can make a huge difference on it being just perfect to way overdone and you don't wanna get dry overcooked fish. So check your fish with the temperature, always double check before you bring it out, let it sit for a little bit and then serve it. As always, share this video around because when you share these videos, it helps me immensely, but it helps everyone else see good food is doable. It's easy to make at home. You can do it, I can do it. Believe me, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Check my website, wiseguide.com for this recipe and all my others. Enjoy.